Tired of the daily grind and wish for simpler times? I prescribe Mountain Blade colon Warband. Mountain Blade will take you back to the wonderful happy times of feudal Europe, allowing you the opportunity to raise a mercenary group and roam the countryside fighting battles, expanding your personal wealth, and fulfilling the intrinsic dream of any red-blooded male, territorial expansion, all while maintaining a healthy side hustle as a slaver. In Mibois, life is cheap and quick. For example, in order to convince this fine young peasant man to leave his village and risk his life in medieval combat, he will demand a steep commission of 10 dinars. For perspective, this 6 kilo gram vat of butter roughly costs around 140. Mountain Blade is a medieval RPG developed by Turkish company Tail Worlds. As such, their form has multiple, multi-page, and multi-year discussions on the Armenian Genocide. In this game, you take your character, start a small fighting force, and through the heat of battle, gradually expand your forces until you become one of the most feared and respected fighters on the continent. At least that's what they want you to believe. This is actually a game about making numbers go up, specifically the number of coins in your pocket. Things like leading a charge against the enemy or besieging towns is just background fluff to make the game appear much more interesting. Every choice in this this game leads me to a complex financial algorithm, which consists of, if I lose this fight, how much time and money will it take to rebuild my army? Fight battles, besiege cities, waste time trading goods for minimal profits, take the Die Works investment pill, and partake in sparring tournaments as an excuse to flex on the royalty. I might have just listed essentially everything there is to do in this game, but damn is it pretty good. Before working on this video, I had 222 hours of playtime, which might not sound like a whole lot to some of you more professional gamers out there, but keep in mind, this was all on one save, and a save of Warband is never truly finished, until the entire continent is under your fist. On the main menu, this absolute banger pops off. Just close your eyes. See yourself on a horse. The sky is blue, grass is green. A poor shirtless bandit, barely armed, is running for the hills. His brother's slain while trying to weasel payment from your war party. Greening you raise your beating stick. These poor bastards pose no threat, so no need for a blade. Plus, killing them would only cut into your profits. Crack! He falls like a sack of potatoes. He seems spry. He will definitely fetch a fair price from the slavers. See what I mean? absolutely serene. Click on new game, fill out a personal survey, and give yourself a name fitting for a future renowned feudal leader. Then make a face to match. <laughs> After character creation, choose a starting city. Any of these choices are correct as long as it's Praven. At the very least, avoid Tolga, unless you have a fantasy of being constantly non consensually harassed by horses. Once I arrived, I was immediately attacked by a local bandit looking to redistribute my wealth. After dispatching him, I'm approached by a local merchant. He tells me his brother has been kidnapped and held hostage by a group of bandits that have been operating in town while the guards turn a blind eye. He offers me some capital to hire some local men and go get him back. Initially, this pulled at my heartstrings. This poor man has nowhere left to turn to help his brother. The local lords care not for his plight, so he must rely on the kindness of a stranger to save his kin. This is truly tragic. But then I realized something very important. This is a video game, and his brother doesn't exist. So I graciously accepted his investment and left. Setting. This is Calradia, or not Europe. Calradia is home to six unique factions, each with their own unique troops. Rodokes, mountainous people based on the Italian city-states. They have the best range fighters in the game. Seriously, these bad boys will turn anything within a hundred yards into a fine pink mist. Swadians, aka the punching bag. They are the most central nation and are always at war with pretty much everyone. At the beginning of the game, they start out with the centermost city on the map, and after a few in-game months, they will never control it ever again. And if that's not depressing enough, they're also based on the French. They have the best knights in the game. Serenids, the Middle East. That's Google Translate Arabic for, like the Swadians, but a bit worse. Nords, best infantry. Also, Nord territory is the one geographical location where the most eloquent speakers in the game live. That's a nice head you have on your shoulders. I will drink from your skull. Less talking, more drink from your skull. Vagers, Slavs, and finally Karagats. The Karagats can go fuck themselves. They're a Mongolian faction with all cavalry. Imagine fighting a large force of all mounted troops. It's a fucking nightmare. There's a lot of variety in available troops, and while people will say there's a clear-cut combo, you can really do whatever you want, and you'll want to mix up your forces based on what you're trying to accomplish. For instance, trying to chase down enemy nobles on the world map, Swadian knights make your party move a bit faster on the overworld, and they decimate in the open field. Fighting an army with lots of archers, Swadian knights can get in quick and hit hard. Fighting an army with lots of cavalry, utilize a force of Swadian knights to avoid the enemy outmaneuvering you. Want to participate in a siege, Rodok sharpshooters in a strong melee class like some Nord Huskarls, or maybe even some Swadian knights. The combinations are practically endless. Combat. When you encounter an enemy party on the overworld, you will be presented with four options. Surrender, sacrifice your men and flee, fight, or lose the battle. Letting your troops attack without you is an auto-resolve, and no matter what level your troops are, many will die. Auto-resolve against some lowly bandits? Well, unfortunately for you, while your force of 70 battle-hardened warriors dispatched five bandits, one of your highly skilled, very expensive knights must have fallen from their horse and hit their head on a rock. 
Once you begin a fight, the game will randomly generate a battlefield based on where you are in the overworld. This can be especially good if you're in a mountainous region. This is an actual battle map I've gotten. Leading your troops into battle and facing your adversaries in hand-to-hand -hand combat may be very honorable, but honor is for pussies. 90% of any fighting outside the arena is going to be done on horseback with a bow, and let me tell you, nothing feels better than riding around picking off enemy foot soldiers or deliberately running into enemy cavalry and shooting them repeatedly as they hold their weapons up. Horseback combat is exceptional. The only reason I hate the Karagats is because I don't like others having the same advantages as me. Okay, exposition over. What is the gameplay loop of this game? Kill, loot, repeat. When you first start, you will need to begin gathering your forces. This involves hiring local villagers and hunting down small groups of bandits, stripping them of their possessions and freedom to fund new equipment and troops. This loop continues while you build up your skills to allow for a bigger warband and faster troop training. You'll start out with some filthy inbred peasants, but if they manage to survive a fight and you give them 10 bucks, they instantly become a trained soldier, ready to follow any orders, including pillaging defenseless villages, even the one they came from. Once you've raised some loyal troops, the next step to greatness is gathering renown. Renown is essentially your Cal Radian social credit score. Doing good things like killing your enemies will raise this score, making your social standing rise across the continent. Normally, after you get sufficient renown, you'll be asked to become a vassal of one of the kingdoms, but this time around, I decided I didn't need to wait for that, and I struck out to create my own nation with nothing but 60 troops. After a couple of real-time hours, I finally managed to take the central city of Durham, snagging it from the Karagats right after they took it from the Swadians. A clear show of my impressive tactical mind. Just call me Sun Tzu. However, my brilliant strategy didn't account for the Karagats to return with a war party of over a thousand men. I may have overestimated my abilities here. Hire troops, fight, level up, repeat. That's pretty much it, but you can also try out the multiplayer. While in the single player, you're a highly skilled lord, surveying your troops from horseback and barking orders, the multiplayer provides a much more down-to-earth and realistic portrayal of medieval combat. I joined a server and carefully allocated my starting funds to purchase armor and equipment, only to immediately get absolutely destroyed by a shirtless Frenchman with a pike. The game uses a mouse direction combat system, meaning the multiplayer fights can potentially be quite deep and rewarding for those who master it. And after a whole minutes of training, I learned that the E button performs a kick. And regardless of winning or losing the duel, just kicking your opponent over and over again is quite fun. After a while, the main game can get kinda old. Thankfully, there's a wide variety of fun and setting accurate mods to choose from. Some that I enjoyed include Diplomacy, mainly just a vanilla overhaul mod with more diplomatic options. When starting a new game, this was the first setting on the menu. <laughs> well, that's clearly wrong. Let's go ahead and turn that on and oh. Oh. When that's an explicitly worded setting, you know the mod is going to be quite good. Independencia de Chile. This one is set in a fictional fantasy world named after a fruit, and from what I can gather, it's a bunch of nations fighting in some sort of post-colonial era. Every soldier in this one is named in some cryptic, indecipherable language, but I think muskets are pretty cool, so I had fun with it. Warsword, a Warhammer mod. Mountain Blade is already an incredibly autistic game, and this just cranks it up to 11. Snow in the East. This mod focuses on the Eastern Front of World War II. I joined the USSR because they're the good guys, right? I roam the countryside with my party, seeing the sights and partaking in a communist favorite pastime, starvation. No worries, I'll just head into a nearby town and purchase some provisions. However, this mod plays into the realism quite heavily, as in the major cities there are no official markets and zero food to purchase. Later, I joined up with another general to take on a patrolling group of ideological crots. On the battlefield, we had 129 troops against their 78. I was confident in our numbers. This confidence was misplaced. Once we crested the hill, we immediately lost 17 men in an instant. At the end, we faced 129 casualties. But worry not, fellow comrade. Though we may have lost our entire fighting force, we managed to inflict a whole 8 casualties on the enemy. At this rate, we'll only need around 1,100 more men to destroy the remaining 70 Germans, which, to me, sounds like an incredible ratio. Mountain Blade Warband is a great game, and I highly recommend it, especially if you enjoy a gaming experience that is 90% traveling a world map and grinding bandit battles. It is one of my favorite games from when I was younger, and while I now find the game a bit too grindy to ever fully complete again, I did conquer the map back in the day, so I still get to feel superior to others, which is really all I need. More content at some point. I've decided to start ranking games I talk about on this dumpster fire. These will be emotional knee-jerk reactions, and I will never update a game spot no matter how my opinion may change in the future. Stay safe out there and have a nice day.